everyone. Welcome to the Lawyer Lifter Podcast or Mel's Minutes, where I talk about lifting life and business. So hi, everyone. Welcome to another new episode, Revamped Lawyer Lifter Podcast. And today I'm really excited because we left off the last episode of the revamp with, okay, Mel and the Dream Team. And one of the first members of this Dream Team is Mike Shea. But kind of and sort of, Mike Shea is a registered dietitian. I started working with him pre-pregnancy. And so we're going to unpackage everything as to what the hell is a registered dietitian? Who is Mike Shea? Why do you seriously need one, even if you're not pregnancy or postpartum? And like, how did that change from my athleticism with nutrition into pregnancy and then into um, postpartum. So, Mike, um, welcome. Thanks for having me, Mel. So, um, what is a registered dietitian? Yeah, um, so it's kind of a term that some people aren't very aware of unless they have had experience with a registered dietitian or um, they're in healthcare. Uh, the term nutritionist and registered dietitian sometimes gets used interchangeably. Um, but essentially, a, a registered dietitian is an individual who goes to school, gets, gets a degree in nutrition, and then goes through a 1,200-hour internship um, and then sits for an exam and becomes a registered dietitian. So the main difference is, is just the formal education and if we're talking about medical nutrition therapy, individuals who have chronic diseases, um, a registered dietitian is able to give nutrition advice to those individuals rather than a nutritionist is not able legally to give that nutrition advice. Yeah, and you know, I, I want to say that my transition to Mike happened because I was plateauing in my nutrition and you know, I just also want to say with my my um, weight loss journey and then my move into competitive powerlifting, you know, like it was very much just following at the time the CrossFit gym um, that I was working out of in 2015 and then just kind of like seeing what those coaches were saying. So it wasn't actually very guided. So I was able to get to a certain point losing um, all of the weight I started at like 180 or like between 175 and 185 for my 410 frame and then there was a point where I, I plateaued again and I was with another nutritionist but again um, what that plateau happened because my belief is there she was not armed with all of the current data with that really that education background and so that was what sparked my involvement on um, involvement with mike um, because i really needed to understand you know like fuel food a healthier relationship with food you know a sustainable lifestyle even outside of Com competing in a strength-based sport and so I wanted to also ask you before we even get to the that juicy topic of movement into pregnancy you know like yeah. how does a person you know with a goal like hey I I do want to have um like a healthy lifestyle I want to lose weight but I don't want to be in a ball and chain when it comes to food so what is your approach because there's so many diets so many approaches yeah uh, that's a good question you know you have um, different individuals who have different goals and what i always say is you know your actions need to match the goals that you have so if you are someone who wants to be a physique competitor your daily habits with your nutrition and your sleep and your stress needs to be on point because there's going to be there's going to come a day that you're going to be on stage and you're going to have to be in that like tip top shape. Um, so your habits and your daily actions need to reflect that. If you're somebody who is you know just a little bit overweight, out of shape, and wants to lose ten to fifteen pounds, like 
your habits need to match that. So what that means is like, you don't need to track your calories or your macros like to a T every single day. You know, I understand that people have lifestyles, they have demanding jobs, um, sometimes they're pregnant, um, sometimes, you know, they have a social life and we just need to be able to incorporate that into their plan so they can still get to the, to the goal they want to achieve um, but they don't feel like they are kind of attached to a ball and chain when they have, you know, these, these, uh, these goals. So it's all about having a balance and, you know, it's, uh, it's not sexy by any means. Um, you know, like you see people who are very popular on, um, on social media and they have like these very clear cut rules of like, Hey, if you do this, you're going to get to X, Y, and Z results. Um, and it can be really successful in the short term. Um, but if it's such a deviation from their kind of current lifestyle, it's not going to be something that they can sustain or achieve for three, six, nine months, two years from now. So I always try to find a way to incorporate kind of the main principles of having to or the ability to lose weight, but also try to incorporate it into what they're kind of already doing um you know some lifestyle things need to change some habits need to change because more than likely those habits that you have had over the past couple years is what kind of got you to where you are so there's definitely some tweaking of of habits that need to happen in order to get to where they want to go but um you know i always like to try to figure out you know what are some foods that are like your you have to have these foods, you know, it could be cultural reasons, um, or it could just be that they really like pizza. Um, and you know, if we need to find a way to incorporate some pizza into their diet to help them adhere to their diet, um, it's going to be a much easier transition to once we kind of move away from the tracking and being so hyper-focused on, um, on their nutrition goals, um, so that they can sustain that for a long period of time. Yeah, and I just, I also want to talk about the fact that, you know, before I got pregnant, I was on this track with Mike, and what I, what attracted me to going with Mike is that I would see examples of those clients and athletes under his tutelage who were able to do fun things, and it seemed like they had a really good relationship with food, versus I was coming from you know, competent, I, I don't, I have never not trained and never not competed since 2015, except during COVID, but I was still training, but, and we were training with Juan, um, knowing that in 2021, we would get back on that platform. But it, it was such, I was developing such a horrible relationship with food, because I just had this view that, certain foods were a no-no and I had to be very strict versus me seeing these athletes and these just regular people who wanted just healthy habits who were hitting like goals aesthetic or otherwise and they just literally seemed happy there wasn't like a food that was out of their life or you know like For example, for powerlifting, you know, I have a two hour window to fuel and to make weight and fuel and eat up and then compete. I saw athletes who Mike has a contingency of, you know, fighters who have very who have very similar weigh in schedules, um, lots of times very strict, more strict than um, a powerlifting strength base um, weigh in. And they were not going through the torment of what I was going through. And so what, what Mike had just said is like he was looking like science, almost like research investigation, like, hey, like what's a food or like how's your lifestyle? And then how can we create a plan that will get you here, but also not make you like crazy mentally and emotionally with food? Yeah, and something that obviously is going to help with that is like the time that you have from when you start, I guess, quote unquote dieting to when you have your meat, the more time you have, the more flexibility you can have in your diet. 
Um, if you, because when it, you know, it, essentially it comes down to the only way you're going to lose weight is if you're in a calorie deficit and if you're just kind of fucking off and, and having foods that aren't really aligned with your goals, um, you're not going to be able to get to that weight class. So the more time you have, the more flexibility that you can have in your diet. And we just need to kind of monitor that over the weeks. Um, and that's what's really important is giving yourself enough time to to get to that weight class so you don't have to have these very um, very rigid or very restrictive diets and also having to go through what you went through, Mel, in terms of going into a sauna or going into a bath, having the sweat, especially when you have two-hour weigh-ins, you know, you don't have enough time um, to be able to replace that fluid and replace the sodium, and then it affects your performance um, on the platform. Um, so I think with you, it was really important because I think your meet that you were going to be doing was in March, and we started working together in the summer. I want to say it was maybe June or, or July. Yeah, it was right after my last nationals competition, which was in yeah. June of 2022. And I yeah, was like done. So that, I was like, I'm done with this. Like, I, I'm i going to Mike. <laughs> I know. And it, it sucks that it has to be that something bad has to happen in order for you to kind of realize like, hey, something needs to change. Um, but that's typically the that's typically the time where I start to work with someone is because you know if something happens once they're like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do this myself I'm gonna do it better and I'm gonna make sure I don't have to go through X Y and Z in order to get to where I want to go in terms of competing or making weight and then it happens again and then that's when they're like okay something needs to change. Um, so that's why I was like really, really happy that you had reached out um, with so much time so that we didn't have to be um, so rigid or so restrictive with your diet. You know, we could kind of play around with things. Um, I know you're super busy. You have a very demanding job and sometimes it requires you to travel. Um, so that just gives us the flexibility to be able to not have to be like, hey, Mel, like you absolutely need to hit these macronutrient targets each day. It's like, hey, if we're consistent 80, 90% of the time and we're still seeing the trend that we want to see, then eventually we're going to get there. And then once it starts to get closer to the meat, um, then it's like, hey, let's, you know, meat's coming up. Let's kind of tighten things up a bit um, so that we can continue if we already are on weight, uh, which is something that I like to do is at least a month or two months out, get the athlete on weight so that they don't need to do any kind of uh, any kind of cut or manipulate their their diet very much, um, and then they can kind of just maintain that weight as they go into um, into weigh-ins and, and into the competition. And one of the things that was really um, eye-opening for me pre-pregnancy, because as Mike is alluding to, you know, like we were on track to compete. I and Juan, who will come on later. I came off of nationals for, I think, my fourth time, uh, USAPL, and I was going to hit a qualifier and then straight into nationals, which is very typical for someone who's been doing this for that long. You you just simply want to build, then you want to qualify, and then you want to just like go for nationals. And what had never been... What, what was never revealed to me was a process. And so with Mike, you know, I, that like, you know, that curtain was undone. So it was very data driven. I, of course, like I weighed in, but we would, ch- you know, we would change macros. Like I was given like rest macros, training macros, you know, and then we talked about like a possible refeed, but all of that was very much like open to me. And then we checked in and we discussed it and the, the, the science and the whys. And when I would feel like, oh, my weight is fluctuating, why? That was explained to me. And then also like patterns of like where I was. And so um, do you feel like you employ a method that's much different or very like more transparent than others sitting in your position? Um, I think, 
I think nowadays more people are, are more transparent. Um, I think there's a lot of competition out there in terms of, you know, other registered dietitians or just online coaches. A lot of them are, are very educated as well because there is so much information out there. Um, I always like to be very transparent. I like to have a collaborative approach. It's just something that I've, I learned in school is collaborating with the individual, meeting them where they are. And um, more often than not, I find that if it's collaborative with the client or the individual, you know, they have a more, they're more successful or more inclined to, um, to follow what you're saying because they feel like they have a say in that approach. Um, obviously, you know, if the client wants to do something that's not going to get them to to their goal, then you know there has to be some sort of compromise there. But um, I always encourage clients to ask questions because it gives them more education, especially um, if it's something that because I don't expect my clients to work with me forever. You know, actually, I don't want them to because I want them to be able to learn from me and be able to take that and do it on their own because I can't be with them for. 20, 30 years, you know? Uh, so I always encourage clients to ask questions so that they learn. And then it also keeps me on, on keeps me on my toes because if it's something that I don't know, um, then it's something that I can look up and research and then I get a better understanding of it as well. Um, and then it just helps me to explain things to them so that they feel like what they're doing on a daily basis, you know, is getting them closer to, to their goals. And they understand the why behind it as well, rather than me just saying, hey, um, you know, I, I ended up dropping your calories and um, this is going to be your new calorie goal. Yeah, which is something you know that, I mean? exactly. And that was what I had come from. And it, it was driving me to another like unhealthy uh, view of the sport. And I was getting burnt out and it was it was bad because, you know, instead of focusing on what I love, which is powerlifting and getting comp- and getting on that competitive platform, I was like ultra focused on things that really I shouldn't be so stressed out about, which are food and making weight. And so, you know, here we are. I started working with um, Mike right after I came off of nationals um, in Vegas, June 2022, and I got pregnant I want to say like October but we during that time period from June to October I was at I was on track to be like my strongest I was you know like eating so well Um, I was hitting you know my like the weight um, weight goals everything was going good and then you know, the as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I told first, obviously, John, my husband, and then actually right after, you know, uh, Mike and Juan, um, because I'm so much like regulated in terms of my athleticism and my nutrition, I needed to know, okay, like, that changes so drastically now what should we do? And what I appreciate with Mike is he's also a dad, but um, he is learning like a little bit with me too. So do you want to talk about your background in um, nutrition for a pregnant athlete? Yeah, um, it definitely it was, it came as a shock to myself as well when you told me. Um, because, you know, we had this, this clear goal and we were heading towards that goal. And then, um, you know, when you brought that up, I was like, Oh wow. Okay. Like what's, what are we doing now? You know, like what's next? Um, and, uh, I, like you said, I am a dad, so I I do have, um, some experience with seeing how my wife went through pregnancy and kind of seeing, you know, some of her food habits, um, some of the aversions that she had. Um, so I definitely had a, a kind of, um, personal experience with it. Um, but you were, or are, well, no, you are my first client that, that is pregnant. I do have one other one. Um, but you know, we, we learn about it a bit 
in school. You know, we do have like, I'd say maybe a week or two where we talk about nutrition through the life cycle. Um, and we talk about, you know, pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, postpartum, and then we start getting into like, as the, the baby grows in the different ages. So do have an education in that, um, but it's not very thorough. Um, definitely was a couple of years ago when I learned that. So um, just looking online, looking at research articles, um, I do have an ebook um, from a very well-known company that um, talks about nutrition for pregnancy. So that was a really good resource for me, knowing what to do in terms of changing your, your diet um, and just making sure that you were well taken care of because I know that um, having that team around you is so important. And I know that, um, you know, obviously you're growing a baby. So that's what's the number one thing and making sure that um, you're healthy, but also the baby is healthy as well. Yeah, you know, and I will say for all those like first time moms out there, I was very candid with my OBGYN, Dr. Pincus of the Women's um, Newport Women's Center. And I told her, you know, she knew about my long athletic background and that I am working with a registered dietitian. I have my coach who's doing a cert in pregnancy and postpartum athleticism and she was extremely positive about that and the one thing that she said to me was you know um i i i always go by healthy mom healthy baby and so um she she's been so um positive about mike and juan in my life but also I want to go back to the fact that like Mike has said, okay, when I work with clients, like I need to know their goals or like knowing a goal really helps with the plan. And I've been always very clear, like, you know, um, I'm not done <laughs> competing. Like I just got pregnant. So um, I was on track and I had said to both of these men, like, hey, okay, okay. I'm doing this crazy thing. It still boggles my mind. If you guys just sit there in silence and think like that's nuts that a female can just create like a whole person without doing anything. They're just doing it. That's nuts. So like I had said to Mike and Juan, I'm you know, I'm gonna, I'm pregnant, I I do need postpartum help, especially on the nutrition side, because I barely understand this, and maybe, and Mike can speak to this more, but um, I have to create, I I would like to create food for my baby, aka breastfeeding or pumping, and my understanding is that takes not only a huge amount of energy from the female but also like you need to be able to fuel yourself for that milk production and then also heal at the same time because I've thought about it and I'm like you know I've got I've put my body through a lot especially competing but when I thought about labor and that what that does to the body I was like wow like you know I think that nutritional component is really going to I really need to rely on Mike because I'm both trying to be a food source and also heal myself at the same time and then you know when we go through that I had said I'm going back to the platform which is another type of consideration so your your (laughs) comments yeah I mean you're totally right like uh you know Going through labor, I mean, I obviously I haven't gone through it, but I have I have seen it, I have experienced it. Um, it is it's intense. Um, no matter which way you go about it, natural birth or C section, like each of them both have a recovery process to it, um, and that's number one priority, right? And then obviously number two is being able to produce milk um, for your baby, and um, both of those things are going to require. Um, an elevated amount of calories so that you can give the energy um, towards wound healing and then also the energy towards milk production. 
Um, so one thing that plays a, a vital role in, in the boom tailing is going to be your protein intake. Um, and we've, you know, we've had your protein intake at a relatively high level just because of your background in strength sports. Um, so, you know, I think post pregnancy, that's going to be still be a, a priority, making sure that you're getting enough protein in so that you can recover from, um, from birth and then, making sure that you have an adequate amount of calories coming in so that you can produce that milk um, for your child because um, obviously, you know, that's going to be really important, making sure that um, the baby is thriving and uh, meeting. Now Now that now the baby is having to meet uh, their, their growth kind of, not requirements, but uh, growth milestones, yeah. whereas with you right now, like, you know, we're making sure that you are gaining uh, properly and healthy within um, the recommended pregnancy weight gain recommendations after pregnancy. Now it's like, hey, now we need to make sure that your baby is getting fed enough so that it's thriving and, and meeting those kind of milestones as well. Yeah, like a weird uh, fun fact that I, I recently learned is that when the baby comes out, um, the baby actually loses weight. Um, or yeah. has lost weight, one of those. But anyway, it's not you. You then have to build up that weight back, um, and that's just so that that is like a and the pediatrician has to okay that, um, and so that's why the milk, like the feeding of the baby, is a very critical after birth because they weigh one way and then they come out weighing less, um, and they need to be like growing at an appropriate. Um, speed but one of the things like mike was just talking about like i'm pregnant now and there is this myth and i learned that quickly with mike and also my own doctor that you're not actually eating for two like you're not just like oh this is my time to go like eat fast food and like not feel bad about it because it's going to the baby actually like if anything um i and i'm i'm a i think Every woman is different, but I've made it more conscious now than ever, even when I was competing to eat like very nutrient dense um, because like <laughs> what happens when you're pregnant is that baby eats first. I don't know how this happens. Your body just knows how to do it, but like the, all of those nutrients go to your baby first and then you get scraps. So <laughs> that... So I've, I've made more of a conscious effort that way. I don't have cravings and like my hunger is like, is the same, but the way that Mike has, we, we check in is just to weigh and make sure like, okay, during the second trimester, I'm supposed to, according to, you know, what I forget what that graph is, but I'm supposed to gain this amount of weight. There's also things my OBG has warned that many women fall prey to, which is um, preeclampsia, which I don't really understand. I think that's, um, I, forgive me because I'm not a fan, but I know Kim Kardashian um, struggled with that and then uh, gestational diabetes. And so my testing for that is going to come up uh, relatively soon. So these are things like nutrition plays such a huge part because you know, obviously, like, I don't want preeclampsia, and I don't want to have gestational diabetes. I mean, those are, those are definitely two very serious things that can happen, like, um, and I think with what we're trying to do is, one, we're trying to make sure that you are consuming enough food, and, like, as you know, like, our kind of focus has, like, shifted from, like, hey, you need to eat these nutrition targets to more so, like, hey, this is what you kind of should be eating and then giving you the leeway to be able to kind of make your own decisions in terms of the snacks that you're having and things like that. But having a structure um, to your day is really important. And, you know, you having those meal preps is something that definitely helps you keep that structure. Um, and like I've kind of alluded to before in our emails is like, I think that is what really helps you with giving you the energy to be able to work as much as you do also be able to train five or seven days a week, uh, whether it's lifting or cardio, 
Um, and then just having, you know, overall energy throughout the day for not only work, but just for yourself to be able to not feel so tired, you know, by the end of the day. Yeah, so um, I will say too, to Mike's huge credit, like this, I, I've said this, I think, in my stories and even last episode, um, being pregnant is such a mind fuck and then add that to someone who's always had maximum control over their body it's like a huge huge mind fuck but that doesn't negate the fact that I'm happy to be pregnant I think it's crazy to be pregnant because like I it's just mind-boggling that some like a human body can create another human body but Um, Mike has been there to really instill in me because I've been so long in weight-based, strength-based sport that yes, like this is not the physique that's, you know, the most optimal because I mean, it's not, it's so, it's nuts, you know, like for example, I, I was sitting last week in a deposition and all of a sudden I thought I was dying. Because I what my lower abdomen felt stretched, and someone like me who I know my body inside and out just from my athletic background, I was startled. Turns out that my uterus is just growing. That was just <laughs> like, what is that? You know, how does that even? So that happens, and then you know, like your body is changing every day and you're not even trying to make it change it's just doing it so um mike has been so pivotal i mean women like you should definitely get a therapist especially if you sit in a position i'm sitting in but he's been helpful to say okay like at you know the goal is we have a different goal it is the uh, creating and maintaining a life And so that's been very helpful. And, you know, again, to ensure that I maintain a healthy, like, relationship with food, a healthy pregnancy, so that I don't go into gestational diabetes or or develop preeclampsia. Yeah. um, I think the one thing that you talked about in terms of your, you know, past relationship with food. Um, that's something that some practitioners might not get into, um, or the client might not, um, divulge that information, you know, like with you years ago, prior to powerlifting, um, you being at that heavy weight and having to lose all that weight, like that's something that I know has affected you. Um, and as you started to gain weight it started to kind of come up and bring up those feelings again of like hey is this normal you know why is why am i gaining so much weight right now Um, i'm not liking the way my body is looking right now these aren't numbers that i've seen or these aren't numbers that i have seen in a while um but by you giving me those that that background information was super helpful because i knew how to guide that conversation and be able to tell you like hey we you know right now like the goal isn't body composition. The goal is to make sure that your baby is healthy, that you're healthy, and um, that we are able to grow, or not to hate we, but you're able to grow the baby to um, so that it's healthy and comes to full term. And the body composition stuff is just kind of a, a side factor of it. Um, and I think you actually brought it up too. It was like, you're in a different phase of your kind of athletic career right now. You know, like previous, it was strength training, getting strong, making weight. And now it's about, hey, I just need to accept the fact that my body's going to be doing all these weird fucking things. Like you mentioned, you know, like uh, sitting in your deposition and feeling some stretching. Like those are things that are going to happen. And the body composition is just a byproduct of that. And once baby comes, then it's like, hey, now we can definitely focus on the new goal in terms of getting you back to the platform. So like you, I think you said it perfectly of it just being different phases of your athletic career. And if you're not an athlete out there, then it's just a different phase of your life. You know, priority should be what the priority is at that point, which is having a healthy pregnancy 
and then afterwards is when the new phase starts and then you know you develop a new goal that you have yeah and i just want to close with saying like yeah right now i'm in a season of pregnancy but i really think though I'm not going to be an athlete forever, but I'm always going to want to get that sort of guidance, like Mike is saying, like, uh, obviously not forever, but I think that I can only speak to women, but if you're not going to be pregnant or you're not going to be an athlete, like, there are certain things that happen in a woman's life, like, you want to, you want that extra help, like, maybe getting ready for a wedding, maybe coming off of the holidays, and you want to kind of lose a little bit of poundage, maybe you want to you know, this or that. And it is, it is so helpful to take out the doubt and, you know, the Googling and the, and the social media and the fads and just go with someone who you can speak candidly to, who can explain things and who can guide you and give you the tools so that you can, can, you can sustain a healthy relationship with food and also bring yourself back to meeting goals if you have different goals. And I think that's um, why Mike was one of the first persons I ever, I told about pregnancy because, you know, as a woman, there is now a different goal and I needed that help. No matter what phase or season you're in, I definitely would recommend getting people on your dream team. So thank you so much, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mel. This was fun. All right, guys, you know, that is the end of this special episode of the revamp of the Lawyer Lifter podcast. Please reach out to Mike. Mike, how does anybody reach you? Yeah, um, great question. So you can find me on Instagram. That's where I put out all my content. Um, My handle is hierarchy.nutrition. And you can also go to my website, which is hierarchynutrition.com. Awesome. And that wraps up the Lawyer Lifter podcast, a.k.a. Mel's Minutes. Catch this episode on Apple or Spotify. See you next time.